Hello everybody and welcome back to Fallout New Vegas. Real quick before we, before we get started though, I gotta put in a small side note here. At some point, the... What a pansom. At some point during the recording, the footage of Tater Keg going from Boulder City to Freeside somehow disappeared. And honestly, this footage was done so long ago, I couldn't even begin to think of where the footage went. Either I forgot to record it, something got corrupted, I don't know. But unfortunately, that footage is just gone. But for the time being, get yourself a blue powder gay or coconut slushy, and let's go explore Freeside. You're back. No, um, that's racist. <laughs> we are back. I start off by going to Bill Ronte, at least I think that's how you pronounce his last name, a man that gives Tater's alcoholism a run for his money. The followers of the apocalypse want this guy so they can fix some stuff for them. I don't really care about the details, I'm just here to get paid. But the reason Bill is so messed up is because he's been drinking something called Dixon's Whiskey. I don't know what that is, but it can't be good if it's rendered this man immobile. But first I wanted to make a stop to the Atomic Wrangler. My first time actually gambling since the one in Prim didn't quite work out. It didn't work out here either, but at least it's only Legion coins, which really don't have much value either way. So why not try to make some caps off of them? I proceed to lose all my chips. I'm making my way to go see this guy called The King, a guy who runs a bunch of wannabe street thugs that I clearly don't know who they're messing with. But Mr. Keg can be a diplomatic man. Maybe we can work something out. Considering the Kings already hate the NCR, maybe even more than I do, I could use that to my advantage. I talked to Pacer, showed off my high roller status by dangling 50 caps in front of his face, and I went to talk to the king. He sent me off to deal with a bodyguard that's been getting way too much business. I don't know what's wrong with that, but I get it. If we had guys out on the streets trying to make a side hustle, you would want them to do more business too. On the way there, I ran right into Dixon, the man himself. Even though he had a good reasoning to poison those guys, they're still under powder ganger protection, and Dixon isn't fronting on our turf. So I make a quick example out of him. Right up the way, I ran into Jacob Hoff, the other so-called victim of Dixon. But this time, it's everyone's favorite cow shit inhaler, Jet. Dixon's Jet to be exact. Is he putting fentanyl in this shit? What is making it so damn addictive? Maybe I should ask him. Oh yeah. <laughs> right. So anyways, I used the programmer's digest to buff up my science skill and convinced Jacob to use a cheaper cocktail of drugs that I gave him out of my own pocket. Easily the nicest fucking thing I've done in this whole run. I went to Mick and Ralph's to see if they would offer a steady stream of supplies to the followers, but he had nothing for me. So I took one of their Nuka Colas for wasting my time. I went ahead and stopped back over to Bill to give him the good news about his dealer. The only way to heal him now is with another mix of Kims. That surprisingly I don't have, which is something I don't understand. Why can't I just give him one of Dixon's whiskeys so he doesn't have to withdraw so he can walk his happy little drunk ass over to old Mormon fort and then they can take care of him there never really made much sense to me after seeing if I can spam him for the failed speech check challenge I can't I read another programmer's digest and convince Bill as well to use less Kims mostly so it's easier on my stash but again surprisingly I still don't have the required items so I went around freeside looking for fixer so I can give it to Bill in the process I ended up again at the atomic wrangler not to gamble this time, but to look for some extra work. Just being a powder ganger doesn't pay the bills, you know? Lucky for me, they need a bounty hunter. Sort of. She really doesn't want me to kill him, but she also doesn't really care as long as she gets her caps. Sounds like a perfect job for me. First though, I check the back of their stash to see where they're hiding their kims. This room was all gun lockers and food. Good for caps but not for the mission. I did find a hit of Jet though. I found where James Garrett sleeps and keeps some of his stashes. I found some Kims, but not the fixer I'm looking for. I popped a stealth boy to sneak around the guards room, took them out and searched through their personal belongings. But alas, nothing but the same. Now, technically, I could buy the fixer I need. However, I already spent enough money on these two druggies, and I ain't gonna spend no more. But if I have to, I'm taking all these weapons in here to pay for it, which is looking to be the case, as I couldn't find fixer anywhere. I went to Julie Farkas, the one person I would think would carry fixer on her, and still nothing. I sold some of my stolen guns off to her and continued my search around town. I went ahead and got a credit check from the Securitrons outside of the New Vegas gate, just to get that out of the way. I stole from the Securitrons 
Spiritron's favorite trash stash, sold some stuff to the poorest merchant I ever met, finally found some fixer, got my gear fixed up, I added some more decoration to my apartment, sold any leftover stuff to Chet, I continued laying down the law on some giant rad scorpions, so much so that I got bug stomper level 2, went a little too deep and wound up in Cazador country. We took them out, but I got a nurse Veronica so she don't wind up dying of poison. We killed a few more Cazadors, caught a few birds slipping, took a mother big corner away from her child, and killed the kid too. I'm not a monster. It made my way to Red Rock Canyon. I found the Great Con Armory, was amazed by the amount of ammo they had, sold some stuff that Veronica was holding so I could buy her a nice new sleek T-45 power armor helmet. Military issue. I broke into the con stash, was pretty disappointed, and it was around this point that not one NCR hit squad had come after me. I mean, I am vilified by these guys, so I'm not sure why they haven't sent anyone after me yet. I'm not necessarily complaining, it's just kind of weird. I leveled up. I picked the second rank of toughness since I'm still basically a squishy sponge and made my way to what I would consider the Viper's main hideout in New Vegas, Bonnie Springs. I very quickly made easy work of them from a distance, used some dynamite for old time's sake, and picked off any stragglers with a good old lucky. I found some new armor for Veronica, got myself love and hate, realized how awesome the survival skill is, and then I did it. I stumbled across Vault 19, the home of Samuel Cook, the leader of the Powder Gangers that Eddie mentioned back at the correctional facility. I went back to the Great Con Armory to sell off some loot, went to Good Springs to sell off the rest of Chet, but thanks to Chet being a broke bitch, I had to head to the 188 trading post, which pissed off some NCR, which pissed off the bootlickers, which was all for nothing because Alexander doesn't have enough money either. So I went to Novak to store my extra combat armor to sell for later, along with some extra ammo I didn't need. I started feeling nostalgic, so I went over to the Mojave outpost to see how the recruiting was going. Going pretty well by the looks of it, found out that the traveling merchants had some money, so I took all the loot from the soldiers and sold it to them. I might have done a little too well, and finally got back to Vault 19, and I had finally got to meet the man himself. Samuel wants us to deal with Lim, his partner during the initial prison escape. He's starting to get cold feet, and is wanting everyone to turn themselves into the NCR. Ha! That fucking chance! But first, Cook needs the fire geckos cleared out of the caves below the vault so they can get to the sulfur, which is both extremely smelly and highly explosive. Should be pretty self-explanatory. I went next door to talk to that little bitch Lim to get his side of the story, but if Tater is anything... It's fair. I heard what he needed to say. He actually wants us to cut off the boys from the sulfur. Are you fucking kidding me? I looted the vault and made my way down to the coves. I headed through the living quarters to immediately get jumped by a big ass fire gecko. This place was absolutely filled with them. Thankfully, they weren't much of a match for Lucky. Unfortunately, while I was down there, I realized I needed a blue key to go through all the parts I wanted to see before entering the cave. So I stole the key from Lem and also switched over to my single barrel shotgun. Since I had completed the weapon quest for the criticals for the one-handed firearm, so now it's time to do some boomstick damage. I made my way through the stinky smelly smell that smells smelly catacombs. Showed a few geckos the importance of a prostate exam, finally got a good excuse to actually drink an atomic cocktail, cleared out some of the straggling night stalkers for some bonus XP, Found some random ass C4 I can't use, but we'll be selling for sure. Ooh, got something good for me? Is it a dress? Yes. No. I actually found a group of powder gangers that I didn't remember being there, just outside of the cave entrance to the vault, so that was pretty cool. After clearing all the living life down there, I talked to Samuel, and he had a very interesting proposition. He wants me to go to Red Rock Canyon to ask if the powder gangers can join the great cons. Regardless of what my fearless leader wants to do, I am a powder ganger through and through. I will represent the name till my final days, which may come soon thanks to the incredible amount of Kim's tater keg is on. So I find Papa Khan and immediately assert dominance. I convince him with our sulfur stash that we would make a great ally against the NCR. I report back to boss man to give him the good news. Leveled up, but this leads to a bigger problem. Because the great cons work with Caesar, and Caesar's legion crucified the boys without a second thought. And undoubtedly, the cons will get morphed into the Legion after the Battle of Hoover Dam, there's no doubt about it. So at this point, I feel like I need to break the cons' allegiance with Caesar's Legion, to make sure they stay independent and not just turn into another Legion lackey. 